Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Some of you may be aware of the fact that this is my 300th video for uh, YouTube. I decided instead of patting myself on the back about that, that I would instead shine a spotlight on the Be the Gold movement, uh, which is uh, trying to raise awareness about childhood cancer. I'm going to go ahead and show their logo right here. And so you see it's kind of like, uh, hello, my name is, that sort of name tag. Uh, this is the image that they're using for this movement. And, um, uh, you know, much as they took the color pink for breast cancer, uh, we're taking the color gold um, to raise awareness about childhood cancer. And please go to bethegold.com. That is the uh, sort of central hub that will uh, show you all the different ways that you can support this movement. And also in the um, info box of this video, I'm going to have six different links for all the various uh, places you can go, like Facebook and uh, Twitter and so forth, to be part of this movement. So thanks in advance to all of you who choose to do so. Uh, let's go ahead and get into this lesson. So yeah, this is going to be uh, one of my chibi uh, videos, and uh, we're going to be showing how to draw two chibis holding hands. Now what I've got here are three different lines. They are about uh, two inches apart, I guess, if you're using the metric system, more like five uh, centimeters. Uh, but really, any size uh, is fine, as long as they are exactly the same distance from one another. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, in time lapse, put down some basic guidelines, and then we're going to get into the real drawing lesson. Okay, so we've got most of the basic guidelines in place here, um, but I am going to add a few more. I thought I'd stop halfway through, though, to sort of point out uh, certain things about this. As you can see, the both of these characters' heads extend from that line to that line. This other line really is just sort of a guideline to, to give you a sense of how far the legs uh, go. In fact, right around the knees is where that line uh, is going to come. Pay careful attention, though, to the space between these two uh, and the space here as well, because that's where the hands are going to be coming together. And if you draw these too close together or too far apart, you're going to have trouble replicating that. So um, just a couple of tips there, and uh, let's go ahead and add the uh, last few guidelines before we get into the drawing. Okay, so we've got the basic guidelines in place. I'm actually going to come in here and erase a few things that uh, no longer need to be there. Uh, and um, the next step, and I'm going to try to do this all real time, uh, is uh, the sort of refinement stage of adding um, slightly more detailed lines, I guess you would call them. And why don't we begin by working a little on this female character's face. I'm going to use this first guideline here as a, a placement guideline for her eyes. Now, uh, it seems like this is probably a good time for me to zoom in a little on the face so you can see the details. Okay, so she's going to have these classically happy-looking um, chibi eyes. And uh, to me, uh, that means gentle curves. I'm going to erase away because it's probably hard for you to see with these guidelines in the middle. This is a Dixon Ticonderoga I'm using. Some of you may be asking, what pencil is that? Um, and uh, so this is, uh, I keep them uh, fairly thick, but not curving too much. Of course, you'll sometimes see much more pronounced curves. And I always like to get one line in there for the fold of the upper eyelid. And uh, I might as well get the um, eyebrows in here as well. Kind of following that same sort of gentle curve. But there's a certain, I mean, we put that guideline in there to give you a sense of the distance between those two. And uh, those of you who are familiar with chibidum will note that there is no nose, generally speaking. I see sometimes people will put a hint of a nose there, but I'm, uh, I'm just going to skip it all together, man. I'm on a schedule here. i got to keep moving. So I'm doing the happy smiley mouth here, and it is partially obscured, as you can see, by uh, the, an indication of uh, the hand and forearm that's coming up here. I'm going to keep the hand itself quite simple. And I guess we're still within frame. I can go ahead and draw the rest of that forearm. Kind of an elongated pill shape, 
is that what that is? Grain of rice. <laughs> Stretched out football. Uh, come up with your own metaphor of choice. Uh, but that kind of gives us the, the basic uh, guidelines of the face there. I think it is, well, just for the fun of it, I'll skip over here and do the uh, boy's uh, face. And I try to get his eyes in the right place. Now his eyes are uh, pretty much wide open, uh, so that's why I put two guidelines here to give you a sense of um, how tall the eyes are. Can, can eyes be tall? That dude has really tall eyes. Look at the height! Um, but it's composed of gently curving vertical lines quite flat on the bottom, uh, the shape of each one of these eyes, and I'm putting a, a slightly thicker upper eyelash here, and the, again, one line for the fold of the upper eyelid. Now, he's going to have a bit of a facial expression that is um, slightly embarrassed, I guess I would say. He's not going to be like, oh my goodness, I'm incredibly embarrassed, um, but maybe just slightly embarrassed in a cute way, hopefully. Notice, again, the space between these uh, two eyes. Spaces between, especially between eyes, uh, I have learned over the years, very important. Almost as important as the lines of the eyes themselves is that little white space between them. Getting that distance right. And I'm going to go ahead and erase those guidelines. Actually, I think that I started to curve this lower line here, and it uh, really should probably stay flat if I want him to look like he's smiling and happy. So the, here's how I'm going to do this embarrassed thing. I'm going to get one eyebrow that's um, pretty neutral looking, but this eyebrow here is going to be slightly curved up. Ever so slightly curved up. And that's going to show his um, insecurity, fragility during this moment of hand-holding. <laughs> I'm making it sound so serious. Um, but let's get the smile down here, leaving a little bit of a gap. It's slightly closer to the um, bottom of the ch chinless chin. <laughs> the chinless chin. There is no chin. Uh, but anyway, closer to the bottom of the head than to the eyes, let's say. And uh, yeah, that gives us, I think, maybe the basics of the facial um, expressions. I'll go ahead and put in an um, indication of the highlight. Uh, that's going to make this the eyes look shiny eventually. And I suppose we should go on and get the ears uh, in here, way over here, kind of far away actually. But that's the way I'm going to do it, because I'm leaving space for hair. And speaking of hair, it may be time to go ahead and move on to that, but let's get her ears uh, as well. More or less the same place, a little low on the head, my style, the way I like to do it. A little hint of the other ear over here, and let's go on and do the hair. Um, I'm using this this curving guideline. I didn't erase that because I think it sort of remains as a, a pretty good guideline for her um, bangs. And people say, "Oh, Krilly, you always draw them with bangs," <laughs> and it is true. This and she's even going to have <laughs> pigtails this time. So yes, sticking with my tradition. But I am actually going to have her wearing pants, people, instead of a skirt. <gasps> Will wonders never cease, yes. I do feel like I need to atone for one too many videos in which the female characters have uh, skirts and never seem to wear pants in my video. So anyway, these curving lines of the bangs, curving in this direction, kind of get to a point in the middle where it's straight up and down, and then they begin to curve in the opposite direction. I always like to have a strand of hair in front of the ears, and so that means getting one in here to balance that out. And uh, as I said, I am going to have um, ponytails. I think I'll just sort of lightly uh, indicate those for now. Let me thicken this one up a little bit here. And uh, just above the ear is where I'm going to put a light guideline for these um, pigtails that will come in here later. I don't like to spend too much time on the hair because I, uh, I do believe that uh, some people can use these videos uh, to insert their own characters. Maybe you want to draw yourself, holding hands with that special someone. <laughs> In which case, you will want to alter the hair uh, to make it resemble your own. But uh, anyway, there's the guidelines for that. Let's go ahead and get the guidelines for his hair in place. And I'm going to have a nice big strand that comes right down between the eyes, as I so often do. 
and then uh, get a variety of strands. One thing that's a little unusual about the way that I did it this time is that the, the guideline of the head is basically the same guideline of the hair, which is not always the case. I think his hair is going to come out a little bit above, just a touch, a shade above that initial guideline. And I am, in his case, making the hair have a little bit of a part. I don't think it's really a part, but you can see where the hair is flowing forth from. Let the hair flow forth from the top of the head, from the crown of the head. And we're gonna have a curving line uh, curving out. Notice how like this one line is curving out, uh, but most of the other lines uh, over here are curving in, I suppose you can say, toward, um, toward the inside of the head. The inside of the head? <laughs> curving in toward his brain? The interior of his head? What are you talking about, Curly? Anyway, but then these curving out sort of strands, uh, you get a few of them. Anyway, the way I'm doing this hairstyle. Getting a few curving out strands over here. And uh, this is, I'm, I'm the guy who's like, don't, I think you should not spend too much time talking about the hair. Proceeds to spend 10 minutes talking about the hair. <laughs> and this strand here should curve in this direction, but not this strand. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and connect the heads to the bodies by way of necks. Such a shocking development. He's using necks to connect these heads to the bodies. And um, now I think it is time to refocus the camera because we're moving on to a section where I'm going to be drawing the claws. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to try to move through this a little more quickly um, because there's a lot left to do in this video. I want to ink these drawings up and I'm actually going to color them in using markers, which is a fairly rare thing. I think I've only done a handful of videos, if that. Um, prior to this one using markers, and I will be using a certain type of marker that I have never used in a video before. Um, so I decided to, to give her a slightly womanly figure, that is to say sort of narrow at the waist and then coming out at the hips. Um, but generally speaking, chibi characters have a sort of a babyish um, form, uh, and you don't, yeah, you don't tend to see the... Um, you know, the full figure of a fully grown adult uh, in chibi form. And I'm going to have this, you know, I did a very simplified arm. I'm going to actually delineate that a little more. Bending at the elbow, just a touch. I think his arm will be a little straighter. And um, for the hands, holding hands, I think I should... Um, Zoom in. Let's hold off. I'll do that the last thing so we don't get zoom in whiplash over here. I'm going to go ahead and do his uh, his t-shirt. I'm going to have him just wearing a simple t-shirt. Eventually this is all going to be colored in with shades of gold in keeping with the Be the Gold theme. I decided to have him have one hand in his uh, pocket over here. And um, I'll go ahead and move back over to her um, her legs here. I'm going to have one foot. This is a little unusual, I suppose. I'm going to have one foot pointing in. I'm going to make her sort of deliberately uh, a little bit pigeon-toed in a kind of a cute way, hopefully. Um, but we definitely want these legs to have a little more form to them, and that's why I'm going to you know sort of bend them at the knee a little bit there. Uh, and like I said, pigeon toed that means having this foot curving in a little bit towards that one. Still fitting, gotta make sure this all fits within the video frame. Narrow, somewhat narrow at the ankles, widening at the thighs. I'm sort of doing a compromise, you know, between baby form and grown up form. But I decided to give her uh, these pants that are quite cut quite high at the uh, ankles, sort of summer pants. I'm sure there's a word for these that I don't know, <laughs> as is so often the case. 
uh, for this style of pants. Anyway, that's uh, that's my idea for her clothing. And let's come on over here. Um, I thought you would enjoy the sort of pose that he's in. He's sort sort of standing a little more um, in profile, and so that allows us to do um, I think a, a fairly appealing pose. I like this pose where one foot is pointed a little bit toward us, the other foot is pointing quite um, in profile. And then you get the, because the one leg is higher than the other on the page, you get a feeling of a, a, a good feeling of his stance, you know, like he's really standing there. I'm going to give a few wrinkles here at the bottom of his uh, jeans. And we are almost ready to move on to the inking stage. Now, I think that this is a good candidate for the removing the page from the table technique uh, so that you can see me actually inking. Oh, I forgot about the ribbons. Let's go ahead and do the ribbons. Sorry about that. Um, I decided to give her some ribbons in her hair. Uh, but I am going to sort of detach this from the table so that I can spin it around and so forth, all in time lapse as uh, I do the inking. Um, but very important, especially for doing curving lines, that I'm not trying to fight against that with my wrist. If I can turn the page around, I'll be able to get the ideal pivot point of my wrist as I ink in all these lines. But I do feel I need to do that all in time lapse. Uh, let's go ahead and do the inking, and then I'll be back to talk a little bit about the um, coloring uh, before I get into that. Okay, well, this will show you what a goofball I am. I got started inking this thing, and I realized I didn't draw the hands. And that's, like, the whole focus of this video. So uh, rather than incur the wrath of my viewers, I thought I would uh, come back in here and in pencil uh, show uh, how to draw the hands themselves. Uh, so let's go ahead and zoom in on that and uh, do all of that in real time. Okay, so when you're drawing chibi characters holding hands, uh, you are greatly simplifying the anatomy of the human hand, but you do sort of have to decide which uh, person's uh, hand is, um, you know, palm up and which one is palm down. And I've decided that I'm going to have the boy uh, with his palm up, uh, sort of holding the uh, girl's hand uh, so that her hand is sort of resting in his, kind of like he's cradling. Uh, her hand. So that involves, uh, first of all, sort of <laughs> uh, melding together all of his uh, fingers into one mass right here, which is kind of gross when I talk about it that way. Um, but that is sort of the chibi style. You're not drawing all these individual fingers at this stage. Uh, and then getting his thumb over here on top, uh, holding her uh, fingers in place. Again, her fingers all sort of blended together into a single mass, and that is indeed how I'm going to do, anyway, the uh, rather cartoony uh, vision of uh, hand-holding in this video. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull out my Micron Pigma and ink this in real time, and then we really will be able to move on to the um, marker section of this video, for which I will be using bum, 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 Copic uh, brand markers, which I've never used before in a video. Uh, went out to the store and bought these gold colored ones, especially for this video. And I gotta tell you something, people. <laughs> these, these are not cheap. Each one of these things is $6.50. $6.50 uh, I'm impressed that there are young people out there who can afford to buy whole sets of these things. Um, this is pretty ritzy stuff, and you can imagine if you wanted a full range of colors, I, you know, if I want to color something in, I feel like I need 30, 40, 50 colors. Whew, that's going to set you back some serious cheese. 
people. Me, I prefer watercolors, frankly. Much more cost-effective uh, in that regard. But let's go ahead and uh, move into the uh, watercolor, the or not the watercolor, the um, marker coloring of this. Sadly, going to have to do it all in time-lapse. But I will come back and maybe say a, a word or two about um, the different choices that I made, and uh, then we'll be able to wind this video down. Okay, well, I decided to come in with a little gouache, a little white gouache across the hair to uh, add some final highlights. Uh, but we're not done with this drawing until I add the blushies. This time we are in the land of chibi gold, so they're actually going to have yellow blushies. Definitely a first. <laughs> Possibly last as well. <laughs> Anyway, I really want to thank you all for watching this video. Please do uh, support the Be the Gold movement. Uh, very important stuff. Really hope you will uh, click through some of those links and lend them a hand. But let me go ahead and lay down this marker. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.